What's up guys? As you saw from the title already, today is finally the day that everything comes together and this SR20 is assembled. Yesterday I finally got my hands on a head gasket and an oil pan which were the very last things I needed. So I guess we will begin. Um, I'm not going to go like super super into detail because there is other better videos on YouTube um, that will show you exactly how to build an SR if that's what you're doing. But I'm just kind of making more entertaining videos so I'll show you the important stuff. But yeah, here is the short block as I received it from my engine builder. We got CP pistons. The block was board decked and honed um, because I needed to go 0.5 mil bigger. Well, I didn't actually need to, but cylinder four, the wall was the tiniest bit out and they said they recommended doing it. Um, he said if it was his own motor, he probably wouldn't have even done it, but if I just wanted it to be absolutely perfect. So I decided to get it 0.5 millimeter board. Um, so CP pistons to suit, got the manly rods in there as well, new bearings, everything, this thing is good to go. Um, crank needed a grind um, that was reusable, so that's all good. With it flipped upside down, you can't really see the rods in there, but you can see the rod caps. Um, just standard um, main bolts because I've heard you don't really need to go studs unless you're over like 400 kilowatt. Um, but yeah, pretty basic. Uh, to begin with, I'm just gonna do the rear main seal and then we'll move over to oil pump and timing and lots of fun stuff. Okay, so there's the rear main seal and cover in. Um, all you do is put some grease on the inside of the seal so that it slips right on there and some silicon um, along the outside of the cover um, and tighten it all up. I also use some Loctite on these because that's definitely something you don't want loosening, uh, especially when there's the clutch and everything in front of that. So yeah, now we shall move on to the front side of the engine. Yeah, because my crank had worked on it was disassembled. There's just these two front parts, the timing gear, slide straight on like that. And then my oil pump drive actually has a tiny bit of damage. Um, I'm not exactly sure how this is caused, but because only one side of the drive really um, goes into the pump, I'm just going to reverse it so that the damaged side isn't being used. And that just slides straight on as well. Perfect. Okay, so one of the first things we're going to do is uh, begin timing. Uh, because this is a brand new oil pump um, and it's one of the first things that has to go on because it has to go on before the oil pan and um, the head and stuff goes on. So we're using the same timing chain guides because the S15 ones and they're good. If you have it older than an S15 SR um, I believe they're not metal um, so you want to upgrade it to the S15 kit but we got a new chain, uh, tensioner, and obviously oil pump. So the timing chain should have three obviously marked links, two up the top, and they did yellow for this one. Um, the one further away, which goes on the bottom sprocket. Um, and this bottom sprocket, you guys won't be able to see, but um, it's got one marked tooth. So we sit the chain around. Put the yellow on the mark tooth. And then we need to grab our timing chain guide. Then you grab the second guide. And then you can just go and tighten them all up. Now that the chain is good um, in the bottom, the oil pump will go on. So I'm just going to add a little bit more grease on the inside of this and then draw a nice line of silicon 
along the edges and bolt her up. Super, super, super important step. It'll ruin your whole motor if you don't do it. Make sure before you put your oil pump on, you've got one of these new uh, front cover seals. Just a little O-ring. Put a tiny bit of grease on it. And yeah, make sure that is in. I would hate to have to pull a motor all the way apart just because I forgot to put a tiny O-ring in. And just sliding this on, you want to make sure the pump drive is in line with the crank and you also want to make sure your chain is tight. Triple check that it's on the right tooth. Now don't just go in a circle um, around doing them up. Just try and go from side to side so the pressure is applied evenly. You then want to go wipe off the excess silicon that's left on the top and there'll be a little bit on the bottom as well. Now while I'm working with the silicon I thought I might as well put the water pump on the front and also my oil block on the side. So my bad, the oil block actually bolts up without silicon as it's got these uh, little seals here that seal the oil passageways. Now I want to do the oil pan so that I don't have to flip the motor around again um, like after there's lifters and stuff in that are gonna leak a bit of oil and then might not be primed. I'm gonna try and hold this chain tight and flip the motor so we don't lose the timer. Now gravity will just hold that. By the way guys pretty much everything I'm putting on the motor has already been degreased and cleaned just to make sure there's none of the old oil with any um, specks of metal or anything like that in it. It's all clean and ready to go. It honestly feels weird explaining to you guys how to do this because I've never done this before. But I feel like I have because I've just watched that many YouTube videos and done that much research that I know every single step of building an SR and I pretty much feel like I've done it. So next we're putting the oil pickup on. It's just a little gasket um, and I'm using a copper sealant spray for my gaskets. You can put these two on after you put the upper pan on but it's just so much easier with the space so I did that first and now we'll move on to putting the upper pan on. Once again silicon right around there and we'll bolt it up. Now the last piece before we can put the actual sump on is that. Now I ended up getting a gritty oil pan. I originally wanted a Tomei one just because it was like made out of sheet metal and I thought it might survive a bit better um, if I was to hit it on the ground. But it's just impossible to get anything Tomei right now. So I found this gritty one. Um, which is nice. Most important thing about upgrading your oil pan is that you get one with baffles. Um, I think that is quite possibly the reason my engine died in the first place. Um, from just being a little bit low on oil and going around some corners, some G-forces starves the pickup. So these baffles should stop that. And if you're going to cast pan something similar to this, um, you definitely want to be going gritty. You can see in here, um, it's indented a little bit and that's just below the pickup. So apparently, I'm not gonna name the other brands, but other brands that look like this, the knockoff ones, you know what they are, they're cheaper. Um, they don't have that little indented ring and apparently that's enough to not get enough oil into the pickup and can cost you a motor. So oil pan is something super important that I suggest you don't cheap out on. And that is it for the bottom end. Oil pans and everything done up. Next stage is putting the head on. But I am starving so I'm going to get lunch. But lucky for you guys, you don't have to wait for me to eat. So let's put this head gasket on. So I did um, send this oil pump front cover to the machine shop and they machined it along with the head so it's all perfect but it's still a good thing to put a little bit of silicon around the edge here so that you don't get any oil sneaking out of there which is a bit of an issue just a thin line 
just spread it out with your finger so that the surf the whole surface is just like lightly covered. My head gasket of choice is a Tome 1.2 millimeter and this is a Tome Japan. Do not buy yourself a Tome USA head gasket because I've only heard very bad things, lots of failures, but as long as you're getting it from Japan, Tome is great. So you simply just grab the chain. And by the way, by this point, you need to make sure you put your two um, block guides, uh, dows, I think they might be called, um, which position the head because you position the head gasket using those. That just drops on. And that'll be a nice seal. And we're just going to do the same as before, but on the top of the head gasket this time. Now this is where it would be great to have someone help you, but I'm going to try and do it on my own, put the head on. It's just difficult. you got to try and get the chain through with one hand. And yeah, I don't know, I'll give it a go. So it is now head stud time. I've got my Volkswagen head studs here if you want the part number and you can't get any Mazworks ones. Um, so yeah, I've got my lube. I'll lube up the threads and the washers. And these go in just hand tight um, into the block to start with. I think I might just nip them up the tiniest bit with the Allen on the top. Um, but all the torque comes from the nuts on top, not the actual studs. Even for doing them up hand tight, I'm going to do them in the tightening order that you're supposed to do them, which is pretty much inside to out. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we just drop them in. And I think finger tight is pretty much enough because with the lube on there you just get to the bottom of the thread and it stops. It's probably hard to see but all these washers are loaded with assembly lube now. So we want to carefully drop them on top of the studs. And then we just want to try and drop all the nuts in. I already put some of the assembly lube on the inside of the threads. So... This is a bit tricky. Kind of put your finger under. And then just guide it on. Now for all you Mazworks guys out there, just a heads up. Don't read your manual. You want to be doing your SR head studs to 85 foot pound of torque. Um, even though your Mazworks will say to only do like 60, I think and you want to be doing them in three equal steps. So I'm going to be doing 30, 60, and then up to 85. So it's three full runs through. Um, and just, of course, in our torque order. So this is set to 30. Everything is lubricated. Now up to 60. And finally, 85. That's tight, all right. Oh, how's a workout? That's it. All talk to 85 foot pounds. Head is on. Not sure if I've showed you guys before, so I'll show you 
Got my BC springs and titanium retainers in there, looking nice. Um, so next step is to put the lifters in. So I've got a cup of fresh engine oil here because these need to be bled. Basically to bleed them, what you do, submerge them in the oil and that little hole there, you just get a small Allen key or something and push it uh, until there's no more air coming out so it's full of oil and then I'm just going to chuck them straight in one by one as I bleed them because you can see that hole there if you lay them down on the table they can leak oil and then they're not really properly bed, uh, bled I think some people don't even bleed them I don't really know what is best to do so I'm just going to bleed them to be safe anyway but yeah let's start with that all the lifters popped in they're all primed all good to go next step um, we want to be putting the shims and the rocker arms in so the shims go on the top of those now typically with an SR20 there's one guided shim um, and one flat shim usually you'd put the guided shims all on the left side but I've actually opted for a dual guide conversion so the machine shop machined some new flat um, shims for me so they are all guided so to do this they also have to do a little bit of machining of the rocker if you can see just there the edge is a little bit machined um, to fit in the guide these are apparently all measured perfectly and I don't need to put them in any specific order but for you um, you'll want to be putting your guides on the left and your flats on the right and put them back in the same order that you took them out if um, they haven't had any machine work done so if this is hard to see but all you do is place them in like that um, the guards vertical like that and for you you would probably be putting a flat shim if you haven't got dual guard but I'm putting my second guarded one on the right side um, I feel like you're supposed to have some special tool to measure the exact heights of the shims I guess from the difference in like the springs so the springs might not be exactly the same but then again I feel like maybe with the dual guide especially um, but anyways they don't really need to be I don't know to the micrometer or whatever perfect um, so yeah just gonna pop all of these in and then the rockers just pop straight on as well so you can see the back of the rocker just pops onto the lifter and as these have been machined, they will both fit into the guards of the shims there. Sit that on there. And that's it. Alrighty, next up is cams. I got myself some BC264 cams. They should give me good mid-range um, and a bit more on the top end. So, to start off with these, we just want to attach the sprockets, but not tight, so pretty much just finger tight will be fine. Um, then we're going to lube up here. Very important to be putting assembly lube on the cams, or there'll be a lot of damage when you try and start your motor for the first time. So you just want to put loads of this everywhere that the camshaft is going to be sitting. Now you can see I'm running uh, VCT and just a stock cam gear. So that's because pretty much on the exhaust side you don't need um, an adjustable, you won't really gain anything. And putting an adjustable one on, um, just I've heard of nightmares um, of them slipping and then that changes the timing in your motor and you can have some serious, serious issues. And I'm keeping VCT, obviously just the benefits um, having a lot more power down low is great and yeah obviously no need for an adjustable on the left side when you're running VCT a few moments later mm, I can't believe it um, I snapped a cam cam cap bolt um, this one right here you're not gonna be able to see it but there's most of the bolt in there that's the bolt snapped clean. It was so loose and it just snapped seriously. Just old bolts, I guess. 
I probably should have replaced them all. Knowing how easy they snap now, but it is what it is. I'm gonna have to, I'm too scared to try and remove that myself in case I ruin it more. Um, I'm definitely paying someone to come pull that out for me because I know they'll do it perfect and hopefully not leave any metal anywhere. So, I mean, we got most of it done. I'm gonna continue this video, so I guess the next clip you guys will see when the bolt is pulled out. Alrighty guys, sorry if the timeline is a little bit confusing. It's the next day. Uh, I can't get anyone to pull the bolt out until tomorrow, and I'll have to get a new bolt tomorrow anyway. So for now, because the engine is like essentially assembled cams or something you can do with the engine in the car put together. Um, I'm gonna start doing the intake manifold and the exhaust manifold and can pretty much get everything else together. I don't have the little half moon bit for some reason for the crank pulley so I'm gonna have to get one of those tomorrow as well. But yeah, engine should be done by tomorrow but for now let's start with the intake manifold. So I've heard it's good to put a little bit of silicon around this water jacket um, just to prevent leaks. So I'm going to be doing this on the head but also on the intake manifold side so that both sides of the gaskets are sealed right up. Here we have the Radium Top Feed Fuel Rail Kit. It's a very nice piece of kit and my Bosch 1650cc injectors. Um, so this is obviously to handle my E85 setup. modifying to the upper plenum um, because as it is now it won't clear um, the new fuel rail. So essentially what's happening is this hard line for the idle air control um, doesn't fit with the new fuel rail now. So what we got to do is we deleted this. As this was one piece, we cut this off so that those two can remain. But they give us this little spacer kit. And so the spacer goes just under here. So we pop this off, put the spacer in. And essentially what that does is changes the source um, from here to this little port on the side of the spacer. So we can get a hose around here and not have any issues with getting past the fuel rail. Now the space is on, hopefully it makes more sense. Um, it just blocks off this port here and creates a new little port here so you can run a hose. Next thing going on is this Mishimoto oil sandwich plate. I've added an AN fitting on the side so that I can run a line off to a pressure sensor. I've already mounted this block in the bay, which I think looks really clean. Um, and yeah, so there's a fitting on here. A line will run to that and this is the sensor. So it's just to keep it off the engine away from all the vibrations and keep the sensor alive. Very nice. Also thought I'd mention I'd added a Mishimoto magnetic drain plug just to catch any little particles. I think it's a especially good idea with um, a new motor. The next day. All right guys, it's day three. Um, we're gonna finish it today. Had to go and get this little wood rough key it's called that goes into the crank because I never got it back after they um, grinded my crank. Um, so this just guides the crankshaft pulley. So now we can put my new ATI damper on.
Now, you're supposed to use a special tool when you're installing these, but I've got a special tool of my own I like to call in background. And because I'm not deleting anything, I've got to put the third pulley on uh, as it's removable. So just torque this up with blue Loctite and should be good to go. Now we are onto the real fun stuff. So it is manifold and turbo time. I don't think I've shown you guys this manifold yet as I got it quite recently. It's made by Speed Tech and it's just a really thick walled strong manifold. And I did my research and I think that this should give me the best, like kind of, not really high pitch, but I'd say a bit raspy type of SR sound that I really am chasing. I don't really want that low grumbly type of sound. So it's all V-band um, wastegate as well. And yeah, it's just a really nice piece to tie in with the Garrett G25 550.72. For the manifold gasket, there is nothing better than the OEM S15 uh, multi-layer gasket. So I grabbed myself a new one of these. Also just spreading a thin layer of silicon on both sides of the gasket like this, uh, just to prevent exhaust leaks in the future. So after looking at the turbo on the car, uh, the oil drain wasn't lined up right. So the oil drain is over here and that needs to be on the very bottom facing down and the feed here needs to be facing straight up. And so this is facing straight down when it's sitting on my car. So I just loosen these bolts here and now can spin. I can't do it with one hand. But yeah, this just spins now and can do it up uh, with the correct alignment. Now I think I've got this about where it's going to sit. Had to bend the dipstick just a little bit with this manifold but it's pretty good and goes in and out easily still. Now it's time to make the lines. I've got the oil drain fitting already there, oil feed here and the two water fittings one and two ready to go. So I just got to make up the AN lines. I'm not going to show you me making the AN lines because there's much better videos on YouTube of how to do that. But I'll show you what I'm using. I got all my fittings of course. For the turbo side, water and oil, I'm using stainless PTFE lines. And I've got these nice heat sleeves which I'm going to cut perfectly to the length of the hose so that you're not going to see any of this ugly silver line and it's obviously going to protect the line from the heat of the turbo and the manifold. Fuel lines, I got nylon PTFE because it looks a lot better and as it's not as much of a high heat area, you don't really need to have stainless on the outside. Now I didn't record it, but thankfully the cam cap bolt is now removed. I got a guy to come fix it and I luckily managed to pick up a full set of brand new cam cap bolts. The guy that was here had a look through all of my bolts and he noticed that some of them were stretched. So I thought it was a much better idea just to get the full kit and be safe. So I've got all new cam bolts and a new torque wrench which is smaller and better for smaller torques like this so if I snap one now then it's definitely my fault. Now we put the intake cam in making the angle of the dot pretty much the opposite to the right side but not worrying about the chain for now. So now onto timing. First things first is to make sure the engine is at exact top dead center. So you'll see a marking on your crank pulley and line it up with that little thing that's coming off the oil pump. Then we start off with timing the exhaust side. So you want your cam dowel pin, that hole right there, to be facing 12 o'clock straight up. And you wanna make sure the chain is all tight on this side and that the dot on your cam gear lines up with your marked chain link. Now there's no way to fit the chain around the intake sprocket um, without taking the gear off. So you just pull it out. And the same as the intake side, there will be a marked link on the chain. So there we are. You can see the dot there is lined up with the dark link. 
Same with over this side. And we are at top dead center. So I've been told it's good to rotate the engine twice just to make sure everything lines back up. Um, but you can see the chain is loose. So one final thing we have to do is a timing chain tensioner. Now I opted for a solid timing chain tensioner just because apparently the standard hydraulic ones can fail at high RPMs. So just with these you want to be 100% that the center nut isn't going to back out so I'm going to be adding some Loctite and probably a bit of silicon on the nut because if that nut comes free um, that's what's holding the chain and a loose chain will cause a lot of issues. Now as I've read we want about six millimeters of slack so not much. So right there is about exactly six mil of slack. So now by hand we're going to spin the motor two full rotations of the crank and Hopefully everything should be back where it is. You can hear that compression. Feel it too. Okay, so I pretty much just had a heart attack um, because those marked links are not back up here. But then I watched a video and I realized the marked links are like never going to be back there now because the chain doesn't go around once exactly that the, when the motor goes around twice so that was a scare but all we're making sure of now is that the exhaust cam is with the dowel at 12 o'clock again which is good and in between the two marks on the cam gears there is to be exactly 20 pins so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty on the left side. So it's on each side of the dot. So that is it. This motor is perfectly timed. Now is for the cam angle sensor. You can see I've got a bit of Coryworks bling on here. But um basically you can see this line here. And it might be faint, but there's a black dot and a white dot just to the left. So you want to have the line lined up with the black dot. And because of this helical gear, when you push it in, um, the line should be lined up with the white dot and then you're all good. Now, before I get too carried away, the camshaft sprocket bolts need to be torqued to 110 pound foot. It feels crazy to say, but I just put this little front cover on and the rocker cover is ready to go on. So can't remember if I showed it to you guys in a video, but let's see a complete SR in three, two, one.